Good morning. It's good to see all of you, even on this rainy day. I, I was not thrilled to go out and find ice in the birdbath yesterday, but I guess, you know, this time of year you can't help it. Um, it's good to see we, we all paid attention to the clock change. Um, we uh, are collecting the special offering today and there's also the inserts about Thanksgiving Memorial Sunday. So if you want to, um, uh, uh, you can drop those in the plate by the door. Um, other than that, I, oh, council meeting this week. Any other announcements? Yes. Um, I guess Tom was asked last week and I forgot to do it, but we will start collecting for the food pantry again. Mm -hmm. And this month collections are for Thanksgiving dinner. Thank you. Yes. Um, we're, I will share on one thing. So we're always in desperate need for personal care items, especially should it be soup and cheap groceries. <laughs> Excellent. Yes, personal care items for the food pantry as well as um, Thanksgiving dinner items. Um, excellent. Thank, thank you. It's a good, re good reminder, especially you know, in in the, in this season when we need to remember everyone in our community. If there are no other announcements. Let us join in our opening prayers. Bless the Lord at all times. Salvation belongs to our God. The Lord heard our cry and delivered us from our fear. Salvation belongs to our God. All who take refuge in the Lord will be comforted. Salvation belongs to our God. Let us pray. Sovereign of creation, all that we have comes from you. Physically distanced, we gather in your presence, surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. People from every tribe and nation, every kindred and tongue, to lift our voices in praise, to be transformed into your saints, to be sent out to gather others to share the eternal banquet. Hear the praise we offer, work in us and through us. You alone are holy, you alone are the most high, you alone are worthy of our praise. Glory to you, O God, and to the Lamb, our shepherd, and to the Spirit that unites us all, today and evermore. Amen. Let us join together in prayer. Loving God, as the weather gets colder, we remember those who are homeless, who are hungry, who don't have some of the, their basic needs. We pray that you would help us find ways to, to provide for them, help them feel safe, and help them find hope. Lord, we pray for our loved ones who are sick, for Wendy, for Nick, for John and Janice and Joan. We pray that you would bring them both physical and spiritual healing that you would be also with their families in this time. We pray for the many people struggling in this pandemic. We pray that you would help us provide care for them and help us find ways to keep everyone safe. Lord, we pray for our United Churches of Christ here in this area and in the Disciples Churches in our meeting this afternoon. And we pray for those who mourn, particularly for today for the family of Peter Pfaffenroth. And Lord, we pray for our nation, that we would find a way to work together despite our disputes, that we would find a way to disagree peacefully, and that as we hold elections, that we would remember that we want this to be a nation of freedom and justice for all. Lord, we pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Our first reading today comes from Psalm 34, verses 1 through 10 and 22. 
I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant so that your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. O taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. O fear the Lord, you his holy ones, and those who fear him have no want. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. And our second reading comes from Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 22. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad. For your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under a bushel basket but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, You shall not murder. But I say to you, You shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you are liable to the hell of fire. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar, and go and be reconciled to your brother or sister and then come and offer your gift. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So today in the Christian calendar is All Saints Day. Here at St. Peter's, we honor our local saints later in the month. But this is a useful time to reflect on who our saints are. Saints, not necessarily in the common way of thinking of them in terms of someone who was perfect. But our saints, our heroes, those who set the path for us. Who are our saints and who are those whose example we follow? Where do we find hope? 
Where do we look for examples? Who do we follow? Do we follow those who would divide everyone or those who seek to work together? I remember reading through the history a couple years ago as we were getting ready for the anniversary, and it was, it was really neat for me, not having grown up in this church, to get a sense of some of the people over the years who set the path for this congregation, and seeing some familiar last names as well. It was also kind of interesting to see some of the grumbling of at least one of the pastors who wrote back to Um, This was when they were still sending pastors over from Germany who wrote back that the people here just wouldn't obey him. That's a whole other story, I'm sure. (laughs) But each of us have our sins. Each of us remember those who sacrificed and worked hard to build congregations, to live lives of faith, those who struggled through the Depression, who struggled through the war years and and in many other ways to provide a life for their families, to set an example for their families and their communities of what it is to follow God. As I was thinking about this, I was thinking of some of my personal saints, certainly thinking of my grandparents, my two grandmothers. They were both widowed before my brother and I were born. So we never met our our grandfathers. My one grandmother continued to live in New York City by herself and carrying her groceries several blocks and up several flights of stairs for for many years um, and working in the flower shop where where the, uh, she always called them the boys, although they were much older than boys, where, where, where they sort of took care of her, but she also took care of them. And my grandmother, who always was working on some kind of craft or knitting project to make mittens and other things and to make things for a church bazaars. Thinking of my parents, who, to be honest, I don't know how they provided for my brother and I sometimes on what some of the churches were paying them. But they did provide for us. And over the years, sometimes very quietly, but certainly powerfully, acted to try to bring justice in the community. We had just moved to Niagara Falls when the news of Love Canal was getting out. And a few months after we moved there, he, my father was, I think as we say, voluntold, that he was going to be on a committee, local committee, to help the residents of Love Canal. And so for 10 years, he was on the ecumenical task force. And every now and then, I come across articles or links, and I had a friend who was a lawyer and said, yeah, every now and then I come across your dad's name in some of the legal filings because he was an officer of this group, and so his name was on some of the legal filings. Before I was born, my parents worked in Connecticut, and they and a black pastor and his wife sort of teamed up and would help sort of document the fact that some landlords weren't renting to black families. So they would find a rental listing, and my par- the black family would go on one day and ask about the rental, and the landlord would say, oh, no, no, this isn't available anymore. And the next day, my parents would show up, and the landlord would say, oh, yes, when would you like to move in? Sometimes, sometimes our heroes do big public things. Sometimes our heroes can still act for justice quietly. I think I've talked before about one of the heroes that I uh, learned about in college. Her name was Vera Brittain. She was a British army nurse in World War I. She lost almost everyone she loved in the course of the war and really was ready to give up. She was prepared to say, just send me to the front lines with the, with the army units there. I hope I die. I have nothing left to hold on to. But she decided that it was actually also heroic to try to survive. And in the course of the war, she pretty much lost her faith because how could God that they thought they were serving let this happen? And then after the war in trying to work for peace, she discovered that it wasn't the philosophical 
pacifists that she found most convincing, but it was the church leaders. And so she came back to her faith through that way. I also think of people like Gandhi and Martin Luther King Jr., who, if you look at the biographies, discover they certainly were not perfect. But they found ways to fight injustice, to fight prejudice, without turning to violence. And I've been thinking a lot lately about one of my farther back ancestors. I think I've mentioned her before. We found out a couple years ago that our family is descended from Rebecca Nurse. Now, maybe you've heard her name in plays like The Crucible. She was one of the convicted and executed witches witches at Salem. She was given the opportunity to confess to a crime she hadn't committed in order to save her life, and she refused. She said, I haven't done anything. Now, some of the records also indicate that in some of the court proceedings, because she was a bit hard of hearing, she couldn't necessarily hear what she was being asked, and so that didn't help matters. But seeing as I always thought it was just through my father that I got my stubborn streak of sometimes speaking up and yelling at people in power. Apparently it goes back farther than that in my family. My point is that each of us, if we look, can find people, imperfect people all the same, who can inspire us to try to serve God and do what is right. There is a lot of division right now in our country. And there are some things that we can agree to disagree. Do you like coffee or tea, cream or sugar, bills or patriots, rock or country music? Well, maybe not the country music, but just, just kidding. Um, I, I had a summer where all I could hear on the radio was country music, and that was, that was a little bit tough. Um, but my point is that well, we can disagree on our preferences. Well, we can even disagree on political concepts. I don't think we should, be able, we should have to disagree about certain things. We still have racial injustice unresolved in our country 400 years after the first slaves were brought here. We have women earning less money for the same jobs and yet somehow Congress never seems to pay attention to that. We have unequal access to health care and education. And the news recently has indicated that of the children taken from their parents at the border, some of them have just been lost, misplaced, and some people in the government don't seem to see that as a problem. We also have the question of how we deal with separation of church and state. That concept is supremely important, and it's what allows me to preach today without having to worry that I could be arrested for saying something. I will not tell you how to vote. I will ask you to make sure that you vote and to think carefully about how you are voting. And sadly, there are some political leaders who have tried to gain power by using religion and creating division. Each of us can decide for ourselves how to vote according to our consciences. And we will each have to decide what kind of America we want. I hope that we can build a nation that cares for those in need, that supports diversity, and doesn't just add to the bank accounts of the wealthy. As I was preparing for this week, I was thinking of some of my own experiences that demonstrate and speak to me of this vision of what America could be. I still remember on September 11th, that morning I was sitting there with my six, then six-month-old daughter on my lap, and she was just sort of playing with my glasses, giggling, and we were sitting there on the couch crying. And that afternoon, my wife and I, and apparently half of the people in our town, went to the Red Cross to try to donate blood. They didn't check political party or religious affiliation as we came in the door. They just put us in line, a very long line. And 
everybody was fine. And they were talking and they were supporting each other. They were putting up with a unhappy child at having to be sitting in line. But we all came together to try to do something to help. This week we've seen a lot of pictures about people in voting lines. And in some cities there have been troubles. Um, in Kenmore, people were waiting in the rain for two hours on some days. Working together. And then on Wednesday this week, well, Tuesday rather, I got a phone call saying that there was a food truck going to be arriving at one of the schools and we were, they needed people to unload it. Now, with typical government efficiency, the truck was late. The um, little forklift in the truck broke down. And so by the time we finally had the truck unloaded to even start giving out the food, people had been standing in line for an hour and there were probably, I think by then, about 150 people. And admittedly, some of them were a little bit crabby. But again, no one was checking. Well, we weren't technically even checking residents. No one was checking party affiliation or anything else. Food was here. It was a way to support farmers and also support our neighbors. And that's what I would like to see us do more. That, I think, is the kind of community that Jesus was aiming at in the Sermon on the Mount. One where the people who think they are forgotten, the meek, the hungry, the mourners, Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount is flipping things around. Because he's not saying, blessed are the powerful. Blessed are the healthy. Blessed are the rich. He's saying to the people, some of whom were hungry, some of whom were fearful, some of whom were tired of the struggle, giving them hope. What hope can we give in these times? Jesus was not using religion for power but seeking a better way, a better community in this world and in the next. I hope that we may all contribute to that. Amen. I forgot to mention, um, there was a note on here um, from Dan and Deb uh, saying, saying goodbye for a few months as they head down to Florida. Um, so wishing everyone a happy Thanksgiving, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year. Um, hopefully they'll think of us when we get snow but, um, and, and won't laugh too badly. As we prepare for communion, let us join in the creed, statement of faith that we say and that many of our saints and heroes have said as well. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, Union of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. They will come from east and west, from north and south, from all times and places, to sit at the table and bask in God's eternal presence, in the dominion of God. This is the Lord's table, and our Savior invites those baptized into his kingdom to share in the feast which he has been which has been prepared. All are invited to come and receive the Lord's blessing as you journey forward toward faith and toward heaven. The Lord be with you. Let us lift up our hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. And we pray in the words that our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We give our thanks and praise to the God of Abraham and Sarah, Miriam and Moses, Joshua, Deborah, Ruth, David, priests and prophets, the God of Mary and Joseph, apostles and martyrs, the God of our mothers and fathers and our children to all generations. For the everlasting God made us all. God fashions us into one people and continues to love us even when we forget. God continues to call us home through saints dedicated to God's will. Therefore, let us praise God, joining our voices with the people of every time and place who sing the glory of God's name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of God's glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, most gracious God, for the gift of your child, our brother Jesus Christ, who lived in accord with your will to the point of laying down his life for the good news he preached and passed on to us. On the night of his arrest, he taught us how to serve one another in love with the ritual of table fellowship enjoyed by Christian saints of all times and places. And so in remembrance of our Lord Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves with thanksgiving as a living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we live out the mystery of faith. We proclaim that Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Spirit of the living God, make us one as we partake of these gifts so that we might be in communion with you and one another. As we break bread together, May our eyes be open to see your glory shining through all the saints of the times past. As we lift the cup of salvation, may, may we be strengthened to follow your way even to the point of death, mingling our praises with the blood of martyrs who offer themselves for God's new day of justice, peace, and harmony in Jesus Christ our Lord. Until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast together at God's great family reunion with all the saints. Keep your church one in service to the world here and now. Work with who we are and where we are to form these clay pots into vessels of living praise. That our lives may participate in the same unending song of the universe raised by all the saints. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor and praise are yours, Almighty God, now and forevermore. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. And so, because these things take a little bit of time to open, and a 
Okay, there we go. I got the first layer. This is Christ's body given for you. Eat this bread in remembrance of him. And this cup is the cup of salvation shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Drink it in remembrance of you. As it says in Revelation, After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and all peoples and tongues, were standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits upon the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood round the throne and round the elders and the four living creatures, and they all fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. <clears throat> Amen. Go forth from this time of worship as a flowing stream through a parched desert, pouring the love of God upon the hearts and lives of all you meet so that hope might take root and blossom. And as you go, as you go, know that the God who created you the Christ who redeemed you and the Spirit who empowers you is with you today and evermore. Amen. Have a good week, everyone.